सुप्रभात ओके हैव अ लिटिल लेस पीपल दिस मॉर्निंग ओके यस आई स्केयर देम ऑल अवे ओके सो प्लीज टेक अ कंफर्टेबल पोजीशन एनी पोस्चर दैट यू फील एट ईज यू फील कंफर्टेबल You can rest your back against the wall or against the back of your chair. Close your eyes. There's nothing you have to prove or show by any kind of postures or anything. Only finding comfort here and now. and relax your whole body and smile whatever happened yesterday last night the week before let it all go and whatever is to come whatever expectations you might have perhaps about today perhaps about this retreat or plans you might have for the next weeks or months simply allow it to pass by let it all go maybe take a few moments to feel your whole body and notice if there's any more obvious places of tension and then relax relax these tensed areas could be your shoulders could be your abdomen could be your head awareness will always go first to the places of tension of coarser sensations and so as it does so simply relax unclench the tension and smile feeling gravity feeling welcome the place of contact between your body and the ground perhaps feeling your body slowly 
becoming heavier and more comfortable. Noticing and feeling your awareness, your mind, coming down, settling down into your body. And enjoying just this, enjoying this relief. Bringing up a smile. And when you, uh, whenever you feel ready, whenever it is the right time for you, you can bring up the feeling of loving kindness inside your heart. The feeling of loving kindness is a very tangible, physical sensation. It is this warm, glowing, radiant feeling that you feel in the center of your chest, spreading outwards. That perhaps makes your palms warm. Perhaps your spine tingle. To help the feeling of loving kindness along, you can remember a happy memory, a time when you felt that everything was right in your life or perhaps you spent some time with somebody you'd love dearly. A place in nature you feel love for yourself and all living beings. You can also use some phrases like, may I be happy and at peace. be able to feel love. A 
And as the feeling of love blooms into your heart, smile. Feeling gratitude for the chance of being here. Gratitude for taking time for yourself. Investing in your own well-being and happiness so that it can spread out into the world to others. And allow some time for your mind to continue to settle and as it does so, you will notice the feeling of love and kindness will start to grow. At the beginning it might seem a little arduous, a little dry, like if it wasn't there, but just allow yourself some time. And keep relaxing, keep smiling, And keep remembering a happy memory, a person you love. And at some point your heart will attune to the frequency again, the frequency of love. And if your mind comes up with narratives, doubts, am I doing it wrong? What am I supposed to be doing? Just recognize this as a hindrance. 
release it. Don't keep your attention on the perplexity of the mind, wondering, having all these doubts. Notice it comes with a little tension and then relax the tension. Perhaps it's in your shoulders or around your head. Perhaps in your neck. And enjoy the relief that comes from this. And smile. And then rest your awareness back into the feeling of love. And rather than keeping the feeling of love into a pinpoint area in your heart, what about if you were to allow it to take its natural course through your whole body, unimpeded? knowing that the feeling is also not only in your body but shining outwards. It is the nature of loving kindness to be radiant, to be bright. No need to force this. If you feel comfortable, if you feel like this would be helpful to you, now you can bring up your spiritual friend if it's not already done. And 
place your spiritual friend inside your heart. and surround them with your love, your loving kindness. You can smile at them too. Saying, may you be happy. And sincerely wish them well. be loved. May you always be happy. May you always be protected.
you can even picture them smiling with a beautiful radiant glow so happy smiling at you Notice how already your mind is much calmer. A little more collected. simply by cultivating love and joy and letting go. Letting go of everything else. Whatever arises in the mind doesn't matter. It's fine. Whatever chattering arises, whatever ideas or people yelling in there, just relax. Recognize this is simply a distraction. Release, not feeding it your attention. Relax the tension in your body. and smile, laugh at your mind, whether it's the grumpy mind this morning, whether it's the chatty mind, whether it's a skeptical mind, these are all, all the same. distractions. So smile, laugh. Don't take your mind too seriously. Just 
just gets a little ruffled sometimes. And relax back down into love and joy. Joy and letting go, the two wings of awakening. And whenever a distraction arrives, we have to beat our wings a little bit. Make sure we stay on course. We let go of the distraction, pushing them down. releasing and relaxing. And also this upward movement of uplifting the mind. With joy and love, the smile. And then when we are back with the love, our spiritual friend, then we can simply glide on our wings as long as we can. Only beating our wings whenever the mind is agitated, distracted. And gliding on the love and joy the rest of the time.
If you feel like you need to adjust your posture a little bit, that's fine. comfortable position will tremendously help you feel love and joy. However many times your mind will be distracted, will flow outwards and do this thing or that thing, thinking about this or that, doesn't really matter. If it is very distracted, it is simply an active, more active meditation. But if you continue applying the six R's, beating your wings, letting go, and coming back into love and joy with a smile, you're having a good sit, you're practicing well. your mind will calm down, it will center and become collected and very happy. while you continue to cradle your spiritual friend in the hands of your love inside your heart.
good way to know if your mind might be distracted is if the smile is gone. And when the smile is gone, usually the mind is a little serious. And when you notice it is gone, you can simply bring it back up again. and enjoy. Metta Ananda, the bliss of love. And don't worry, you're doing great. And so this is what you do, this is what we all do on this retreat. From the moment you open your eyes, the moment you stand up, when you walk on your way to breakfast, when you eat breakfast, sending love to your spiritual friend. or practicing with the vehicle of awareness that you're with, if you've done this before. Walking back to your kriti with love. Resting with love. Sitting meditation with love for your spiritual friend. Whatever you do, 
doing it with love, bringing your spiritual friend with you. And everything else that arises, letting it go, six Ring it. And this is your full-time job for the next seven days. And slowly allowing your mind and body to Take in the room, coming back to physical senses, perhaps opening up your eyes slowly and getting ready to take the refuges and the virtues all together. I have no idea of the time <laughs> and I could just sit here for a long time but uh oh five minutes to breakfast okay it's gonna be a quick refuges and virtues refuges and breakfasts <laughs> I think this is going to be in on page two of the book. Page one and then page two, I will uh, give the entrance, Vandana, the homage to the Buddha. Um, but first, I would like to, yes, please have a book. <laughs> I would like to say that um, the refuges in the, taking refuges in the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. Um, is not about uh, choosing a religion or uh, anything like that that I'm trying to make you do this morning. <laughs> um, but in our direct practical experience here and now, uh, taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha um, is very important for, for us uh, on this retreat since what we're practicing is actually the wisdom of the Buddha. Uh, and so to take refuge in his wisdom, to take refuge in basically listening and uh, practicing according to the instructions, basically, to make sure that you have um, remember to place faith in what you're doing. And that will also help you, help your practice. Uh, so taking refuge in the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha is also uh, tapping into their strength, basically. Tapping into uh, the beautiful wisdom and strength that they can offer to us. So it's not about, uh, uh, it's not about uh, taking, choosing a religion or anything right now. So just so you know, it's to strengthen your own practice. And at least for these seven days, placing faith in the wisdom of the Buddha, basically. That's what it means. So, just so you know. And I will unpack a little bit more about the virtues on the discourses. So, but I think it's a little bit more obvious with the virtues. It's just do, doing good. <laughs> and so you'll, you'll have a happy mind, which is free from remorse. Which will, your mind will be protected. So... I will say the Namo Tassa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa 
Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa So usually this begins with uh, the audience asking for the refuges and the virtues. So on page two, on the top, there's asking for the five virtues. So if all together, you can, you could recite that. <laughs> I know it sounds like uh, I'm asking people to ask me, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> sadu, sadu, sadu. Okay, so I will say the line, the, the, each line, and then you repeat after me, okay? I go to the Buddha as a refuge. I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. I go to the Sangha as a refuge. For a second time, I go to the Buddha as a refuge. For a second time, I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. For a second time, I go to the Sangha as a refuge. For a third time, I go to the Buddha as a refuge. For a third time, I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. For a third time, I go to the Sangha as a refuge. Saranagamanang Sampunang, the going for refuge is complete. And now, I will, the same formula here, I will read each line and then you repeat after me, okay? I undertake the practice to refrain from harming living beings on purpose. I undertake the practice to refrain from taking what is not given. I undertake the practice to refrain from sexual misconduct. I undertake the practice to refrain from false speech. I undertake the practice to refrain from taking mind-altering substances. Silena sugatting yanti, silena bhoga sampada, silena ni butting yanti, tasama sila visodaye. By virtue, a good life is obtained. By virtue, inner wealth comes to be. By virtue, one is liberated. This virtue is to be perfected. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And now, so I think I've settled on a little sequence that we will do every morning. And this includes on page 12. We will start there. This is the natural collectedness verses, and we will be reading these verses of natural collectedness on page 12, the verses on Nibbana, page 13, um, the Buddha's final words 
uh, the Buddha's passing on 14. Um, and the Dhammapada verses, um, I said, Five, sixteen, and uh, two hundred. I will, I will guide you through as we go along. <laughs> I know it's the morning. It's okay. <laughs> You'll get used to it. We'll, we'll do that sequence every morning. So. And just to uh, remind you the sequence on natural collectedness, there is a little part missing. There was a, a mistake in the printing. So uh, it starts with realizing that these five hindrances have been abandoned within. And here there's a little sequence missing. There should be gladness arises. And so if you can remember or take a pen if you have one and write it down. And these ones we will read all together. Okay. So, three, two, one. <laughs> Realizing that these five hindrances have been abandoned within, gladness arises. With the arising of gladness, joy arises. With mental joy, the body becomes calm. Calm in body, the mind experiences happiness. The happy mind becomes collected. And now the verse is on Nibbana. This is peaceful, this is sublime, namely the stilling of all processes, breaking free from all mental limitations, the complete calming of tension, appeasement, release, the blowing out. Now the Buddha's passing, page 14. At last now, monks, I speak to you. All conditions are of a nature to pass. With mindfulness, realize this. Mental activities are impermanent, transient in nature. Once they have arisen, they disappear. Their calming is blissful. And now in the Dhammapada section, page 16, number five. Never is anger appeased by anger. Only by non-anger is it appeased. This is an eternal law. Now 16. In this world and the next, one rejoices. The doer of good rejoices in both worlds. One rejoices, one delights, seeing the beauty of one's own actions. And then on the next page, page 18, number 200. Surely we are living in bliss, we who have nothing. Feeders on joy we shall be, like the devas of streaming radiance. And so on this, I wish you a wonderful day. Continue sending love to your friend. And uh, I will see you tonight at the Dhamma Talk at 7. Uh, I live on the third floor of this building, uh, up this, this staircase. Uh, please feel free if there's anything happening to you or that you, you, you feel like you, you really need to discuss. Uh, I, I will be around this, this place on the third floor. Uh, I guess that's all I could do. Did you have something to add? Okay. So happy breakfast. Keep smiling. Have fun. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>